Welcome back to the Lenten Rouge Cycling Podcast here with Benji Nast and as always for the FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine for Touriscope previews for 2022. We have the recaps of 2021. I've got an interview with Brody Chapman on FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine for Touriscope partway through the podcast. It's a separate video on YouTube as well as uh, hot takes and all that sort of good stuff. But before we get into that, a word on our show partner, LaCole. They have their Strava Challenge at the moment in the lead up to Christmas. There's also the LaCole Cycling Club, which you can join. There's group rides on a regular basis, often on weekends with the LaCole Cycling Club. So you can get notified of them if you follow LaCole on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. We have the link down below. But otherwise, LaCole produce performance cycling apparel and you can check them out at www.lacole.cc now for the 2022 preview of ftg nouvelle Aquitaine futura scope who uh, largely operate independently of the men's ftg team so they're pretty much standalone team just share the same title sponsor different staff uh, mostly i understand and so they've got some good signings coming in in fact another australian to join Brody Chapman on the team, but reviewing their 2021 season, a lot lay on Cavalli and Cecilio Trup Ludwig, and they only actually won one race that wasn't French national champs. They won uh, Vuelta a Burgos stage with Ludwig, which was actually a really good win because that was against top competition, that third stage against, I think everyone was there, like AVDB, Nuvia Doma. Borghini, Van Vleuten, that was a punchy uphill finish and, and Ludwig actually beat Nuvia Doma. So that was her first World Tour win, I think, and it's yes. so good to get that off her back. But other than that, Benji, I think they were really missing here a sprinter because there's a lot of consistent top fives in all the major races with the likes of Cavalli or Utrecht Ludwig. They're just missing a sprinter to give them options. Like how can they win Gen Webelheim? Because I just don't think Cavalli is fast enough. It's near to impossible to do so unless they get a rider that can go away and have a long solo. But it's also very difficult to have a solo at the end of Gent Wevelgem, for example. So it's likely to end up in a reduced bunch sprint if the peloton is not too far behind, which was the case in 2021. Now, you're saying we're looking for a sprinter here that is not there. I- I'd put it wider. I don't think they have a lot of finishers because, yes, Cecilio Triplodui is a a good puncher. She can get over hills that other people can't get over. Top tens in the likes of LBL, Flesh and so forth has had better results in the past. Uh, getting second in Flesh, I think in was it 2020? So last year, yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, she got second in La Course this year, if I recall correctly. Yes, and that is also a difference from last year because last year our common on Cecilia Trupludwig was okay. She's missing that. Punch. Now, she obviously doesn't have the godlike punch for the sprint yet, but she's gotten better sprints out this year. Getting second in that La Course group is not bad. That's beating Mariana Valls, obviously a tired Mariana Valls, but still still a good result for what I was expecting from her in that sprint. And that Burgos stage, like you said, very competitive. And surprisingly, that, that was a stage that she would do well at because it's obviously a hilly terrain, but she did beat people in the sprint at the end. It was an uphill sprint, the final stretch, and it shows that she's gotten better in that sprint aspect. And that's an improvement I enjoy seeing because that's the argument we made last year that that is a problem she had. Obviously, she won't start beating Mariana Vos on the flat section. I don't see that happening, but she can definitely finish stuff off more. There's likely people in the group that are going to be faster. Volering has a better sprint, stuff like that. But um, I think that's one of the reasons, like you said, they miss a finisher in general, not necessarily only a sprinter. They miss that finishing aspect, got a bit better in that with Cecilia Trupludwig. And uh, yeah, Cavalli is usually the rider that when she's in the group with Cecilia Trupludwig, I think it was in Strade, for example. Cavalli's on paper the faster of the two on a flat sprint, I would dare to say. And I feel like they... I recall there being a strategic mistake in Strade, but I don't remember the situation completely. That ended up getting no one on the podium for some reason. But Yeah, I feel like Cavalli was in a group with Ludwig and neither of them attacked um, when they were in... Or like, neither rode behind the third person, something like that. Yeah, 
But Cavalli, you bring her up, Angie. Her first year there, I think she was on Valcar last year. She's 23 years old. Top 10 in Omloop Strade, Tour of Flanders, uh, Emokami Naforako, Olympic Games, Road Race, Top 10 on GC, 6 at the Giro Rosa, uh, fourth in the TT at Crona Donation, ninth at Roubaix. So many versatile top 10s here. I just think the problem is she can't activate the race like by going on the attack and often they don't have and haven't had a rider to mark an attack from Elisa Longoborghini who can then have strong teammates sitting behind and or Borghini or Van Lutten, et cetera. And I think I expect more wins next year, Benji, because I think with Cavalli and Ludwig, who are both consistent top 10 riders, even top five in these big, the biggest. And Ludwig. still young. Yeah, they're like 26 Ludwig and 23 Three. Cavalli. And Music think, is 22. Uh, yeah, you're right. But also the fact that we're looking at that Giro Rosa, Giro d'Italia Internazionale Femminile, and she got six there. And we're thinking about that race. Those are two pretty big mountain finishes. Prato Nevoso being a very big climb to finish on, but also that Matahura think on the uh, second last stage where she finished... Also fourth behind Molman, Vollering, Von der Breggen, ahead of Dagnan, Mavi Garcia, Labuso. Not exactly a, against the worst climbers in the world that she's getting a fourth position there. So are we looking at a rider like that to be a GC rider at the Tour de France Femme? Cavalli or Muzic? Cavalli. I don't see it for Cavalli. Nah, I think it's... I, don't see I think Cavalli's a better GC rider, personally. I think Ludwig, I thought... I think I'm... Yeah, Ludwig is not often on the long climbs, doing as well as I expected. Uh, like, I think I'm trying to think of that Tour of Norway stage finish. Yeah, fourth, I think she got, but I don't remember it completely. But we, we saw that. No, actually, she, I can't find it. She came fifth, 50 seconds back fifth. on Van Vleuten yeah. on that mountaintop finish. But yeah, um, she was in the wheel of Van Vleuten for a while, but she held on for too long and didn't ride her own tempo, yeah. I think. And then just imploded towards the line and got fifth instead. So I think that's part of the reason there. Do you think she could could have gotten better if she had a steady tempo when she realized she was going to drop eventually? I think that's what Mavi Garcia and Mulman did differently, and they ended up coming second and third. Is yes, they sort of, particularly Mulman went their own pace earlier. But yeah, I think you're right. Who is going to be their GC option for the tour next year? And it's not clear cut. It's not like between Cavalli... Does Muzic go for polka dots or one of the mountain stages? Does is she punchy enough for that? Because Ludwig could get polka dots, I think, unless yep. they have like double points on some of the mountain top finishes, which I yep. desperately hope they do not. Uh, but yeah, yeah, incoming transfers, Benji. Grace Brown is the, maybe the biggest transfer in women's cycling, apart from Balsamo from Valcar to Trek. Uh, one off, cer- certainly one off. Huge transfer. I think top five one day rider in the world. Left backs, uh, you know, Australian at that top of their game leaving. It's a, a shame to see for them, but over to FDJ and she gives them a lot of options in the classics. And I think it just makes because Trek have multiple riders, FD Works have multiple riders, and often FDJ just have the one or two. She won a Burgos stage one, uh, sort of weird, like progressive uphill drag. She won Brugge de Pana. I think you know, women's world tour race solo ahead of Norsgaard, yep. Dorr and Kapeki. I think she gave them a lot of, like in Hen, Hen Benji, she can go on the attack and now Ludwig and Kamali can sit in. Yeah, certainly. I think she's the kind of rider that can win a lot of races going solo towards the end. She has that engine and a race we haven't seen her in this year that I was kind of curious that she wasn't there. I don't recall her having an injury in the latter part of the season, but I could be wrong in that but she was not at Arirube. And I think her top of rider would do very well on that parkour. Uh, I think she ended her season to get sh- to... Need, she needed surgery on her shoulder. Oh, okay. My in, bad. In August, I think. It didn't like heal properly. Um, that's what I, I think... Because I feel like her season was quite disrupted because she was flying like second at Nakia de Corsa, one Bugatapana, third at Tour of Flanders... Then Burgos was good, fifth at the course. And then, yeah, she had that shoulder injury. 2020 as well, as a reminder, she came second in Liège, chasing after Dignan, and she 
came first at Brabantse Pale. So I wonder, Amstel Gold Race, she didn't do – she did Amstel this year, actually came 19th, uh, but she's she's 29. Who do you think now is going to be their leader, Benji, in those sort of races? I think – or is it not as linear that as that? It's more who, ha- what sort of roles do they have? I think that it doesn't necessarily need to be a rider selected from the start. It just needs to be seen that this is now a stronger block of a team to yeah. fight against the two stronger blocks of other teams, which is Trek and SD Works as the uh, main teams. But I think you've got quite some options on this parkour. You've got quite a lot of riders in this team that can support properly on hilly parkours. And we're looking at their leaders being Ludwig, Brown. We've got the likes of Cavalli also being strong in those races. But then I look, for example, at a Chapman who can get a top 25 in the likes of Hill Classics. Flesh, LBL can be supportive there as well. Then I look at, for example... I don't know, Muzic can definitely get over hills as well. Uh, she got top 25 as well in LBL and in La Flesh. So tons of riders on this team, more than the two I just mentioned. I think uh, vaguely that Grosted did also do pretty well, but more at the cobble races, but I just don't see it currently. Probably wrong on that one. But there's just support here, and there's support for their three leaders. And when I look at the races, and I think about the races this year, I've got the feeling that I mainly saw the leaders and perhaps one domestique per race, and I didn't see a block surrounding their leaders too much in the season. And I don't know, is that because we're watching the races and we see the amounts of SD works and Trek riders and don't focus on the amount of FDG riders that are in that group? Or is that because they're not there? They're not there sometimes. I, I often remember like someone attacks and people are looking at, Ludwig to close it and she has to do that work herself and for example I mean she got dropped with Voss on Lie- in Liege but on Liege um could she is Grace Brown going to be good enough to bring her back or will Grace Brown be sitting on and that slows the group down ahead I don't know but it just gives them more options that's just another rider who's a consistent top 10 getter Cavalli Brown and Ludwig now and they're also bringing in a young rider 20 years old Vittoria uh Bazzini, so she's coming from Val Valcar, seems to be one of the best developers of talent. Balsamo, yeah. Bazzini, Cavalli, all these young Italian women. Now, Bazzini, she came, she won the TT in the uh, European Champs U23. She is fourth at Dwarves Door. She, I think, uh, where, where else? 12th at Provence Pale. She was in the Italian track team pursuit team at Tokyo. Uh, so she's obviously seems to be. I assume an engine with that TT result combined last with her year, track experience. Last year, top twenty-five in RVV, thirteen in Genwevelgem. Those are also results that you're like, okay, this rider can get far in cobble races as well. It can be supportive in cobble races. Domestic. And do I have the feeling that she's got a bit of a bunch in sprints, or am I looking at it wrong? Um, I mean, track background, maybe mm. she does. I think Sarah Tizit challenge. She's got some like top tens, I think, ahead of like Sarah Roy in sprints. So that's not slow by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, I think in a group of three or four, she'd certainly be quite fast. I think Balwaza third stage this year. Um, no, nah, it wasn't a sprint. I don't know. Maybe she's. I think she'd be okay in a sprint. But let's pick their team now, Benji. For say those classics like Dwarz Dua, Tour of Flanders, Paris Bay, Brug de Panna. I'm going with. Grace Brown, Cavalli, uh, Grazzini. Are you sending Ludwig? I think I'm sending Ludwig to some of them, but not all of them. I'm sending her. I feel like you should. <laughs> That's my argument. <laughs> I guess, yeah, because the other teams are going to send everyone too, so you need numbers. Yeah. Uh, Christina Borgley, send her, and as well as... Grazzini I would send as well. Yeah. I would not send Muzic. Uh, Chapman, I would reserve for the Hilly Classics. And then, hmm. yeah, that's how I would sort of I would sort of have the block of, as you said, um, Cavalli, Ludwig, and Brown. I would put in uh, Chapman and Fallen in there as well because Fallen had a top 10 at Hien Wevelgem, top 10 at Brabant Sapel, certainly fits these kind of races as well. So she's won that 
is perhaps sometimes overlooked, but also uh, very strong in finals in these kind of races. And I think that those are the main riders that I'm like, okay, those are the ones that I 100% need in those races if I'm a team like this. And perhaps there's some other riders that are currently riding those smaller races, like Eduardo of Flanders is not the level of a Tour of Flanders, and a Caponi is getting into Eduardo of Flanders and getting a uh, 31st place there. That's not on the level where I'm like, okay, instantly send her to a RVV, but that's also not bad. She got quite great results at Women's Tour, and perhaps underrated in that sense that she is the kind of sprinter on their team, being twice top three in the first two stages there, getting sixth and fifth in the last two stages, also in sprints. Yes, it's not against... Yes, it's against Wibbers, but getting beaten by Wibbers, Malsamo, and Hosking in most of those stages. But it's like on the level of an outsider sprinter right now. So is that strong enough to get those victories in World Tour races? Right now it's not, but it can get them victories outside of that, I think. Yeah, maybe maybe I've completely missed something here. And that Caponi, she, her first half of the season before Olympics is not anything comparable to her results at Women's Tour. And then, so she, 22, she went to Olympics, did the Omnium and Madison in Tokyo, and then came back, Simac Ladies Tour, maybe getting her legs under her, and then at Women's Tour, like third, second, fifth, sixth, and then fourth in the point, I think third in the, third overall on GC at the at the Women's Tour. So she's 22, maybe, and then she had second and fourth at the Madison and Omnium in the Roubaix Velodrome at the Track World Championships. So... Maybe she's the sprinter we're saying they miss they were missing Benji for the bigger races before the Olympics and she yeah, can feel that. I agree, but she's also not at level where I'm like she's gonna win those sprints on World Tour. So she's on the edge or just under the edge of doing that, which means that she can perhaps do it in the future because she's very young and promising. So she could fill that spot if she keeps progressing the way she did at the end of the season. Yeah, I'd send it maybe Brooke de Pana, you could ride for a sprint for her if there's Can do Evil him? Yep. Is that Is she- too much? Uh I think they've got other options there and maybe yeah. make it a bit more open with Brown. But, like, if it's a sprint and Vibas is there, she looks like right now in a sprint, Clara Caponi, she's the only rider on FTJ that, that can beat, beat v, maybe well, contest Vibas. Be, unlike, contest for it. Contest, yeah. <laughs> beat is a lot because uh, there's only one person, I think, in the season that can do so at the moment. It's Balsamo yeah. or has done so. Probably some other people can potentially do so on some occasions. But she's not on FTJ, so that's not the topic of the day. Toponi, yes, indeed, an outsider sprinter. For the Hilly Classics going similar team again, there's a lot that stands on their shoulders of Brown, Cavalli, Ludwig. Evita Music comes in here as another option, see how she develops uh, as well. And probably Farland's a good domestique. Uh, probably send her. Chapman is much better in those races. And then I think... Maybe Victoria Guilman, she's 25. She seems to go to a mixture of races. And uh, Mary Lene, who has been, she's 21 as well. And she did like Tour de Swiss. Maybe it's, she's also a track rider, but I don't know. Can she do, there's a lot of riders like her. Like she's similar to Caponi. Like she doesn't really make sense for both her and Caponi to go unless she's a lead out in those uh, classics races. But yeah, I think it's going to be a similar leadership at the Ardennes for the FTJ Neville Aquitaine team. Have you got any other different thoughts? Uh, I think it's going to be a very similar team in general. Yep. Um, because we're looking at this team and most of the riders that I said I would send to the Cobble Race are also the ones that I would send to the Ardennes. And that is what leads to uh, the fact that a Jade Will, for example, that uh, could be very badly pronounced, so I'm sorry if that's the case. That's the rider that I currently don't see fitting in both of those teams, but can definitely be worthy in one-week races like a Burgos support, Darius Artizit, stuff like that. Even in Simak Ladies Tour, you, you need domestiques there, and that's where riders like that come in then. We don't necessarily need to put those riders also in the, in the, in the heavy-hitting races like that instantly, unless they prove at races that they deserve to be there and right now that's not there yet for for me in my opinion i would if if they're now getting too overloaded with the giro rosa two weeks before the uh tour de france fam 
and we just sent the three big leaders to all the races in the first third of the season, I would then maybe give some opportunities to just Capone to go for sprints in the Giro Rosa and send one of them or send Muzic with leadership on GC at the Giro Rosa to make sure that, again, the big three are fresh and prepared for the Tour de France fan. They have to be, and that's uh, Cavalli, Brown, and Ludwig. I would also send probably Duval and Brody Chapman to some serious climbs in that race. But one of Gozzini or Caponi, you need you need a sprinter. So I think, I think Caponi or Gozzini have to go, Benji. Just because that first stage, you need to be trying to contest for that lead, the first yellow jersey. I think a Bonnie. She's French. So uh, yep. if you're French, you're forced to go to the Tour de France Femme. It's organized by law in France. And that's why I would send her there. Ludwig as well. I'm, um, I've am i got a hot take, but I'll wait towards the end. Or should I say it already? Say it. Okay. Cavalli will top five the Tour de France Femme. Wow. That is a hot take. I see it. I see it. I think it's possible. I think Grace Brown wins a monument. I think Ludwig wins two World Tour races, and uh, I think I just think they're going to have a much better year. I think Clara Caponi is going to win a World Tour race, and I'm going to. She's going to win a sprint. I don't know if it's going to be World Tour level yet. She won a World Tour race. It might not even be a sprint. Okay. Might not even be a sprint. Um, yeah. I'm sitting there over under for World Tour wins. Benji had one this year. I'm going to set it at uh, two and a half over under. I think it's more, and I think when we're setting these numbers, we're often not taking in that we're going to have plenty more World Tour yeah. stages next year. We've Romandie. got the Tour de France Femme coming in, Roman D. Um, it's Sulia coming back as well, because I think it was cancelled this year, the plans of doing it Sulia this year. Battle of the North also races uh, stages there that are going to uh, be sprints and climbing stages and hilly stages, whatever. So oh, it's going to be more than two and a half. Yeah, I think- Easily. Yeah, maybe that's well. <laughs> they only won one this year, so I said it. I'm going over as well, which will be triple their wins this year. But yeah, I think Brown Brown wins. will have more than two and a half. Yeah, but Prabance is not World Tour, and she won that last year. And this year, she won one World Tour, two World Tour races, rather. Yeah, so assuming she continues, yeah, maybe two and a half is too conservative. But yeah, I'm, I'm hyped for their team. I just I'm hyped for other teams who are you know they're probably they were like ranked seventh or eighth this year. Be more competitive against the FTF Works, Trek, Segafredo's of this world. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully, FTJ keep improving. Any last thoughts on their team, Benji? Before we get out of here, I'm a. It's my favorite team in women's cycling. Eh, not my favorite. I think I like Canyon Shram, but um, I feel like they they also don't get the wins they should uh, with Nivea Doma. But yeah, it's. It is a team that I do quite like. I, I like the underdog, so I, I want FTJ to win more races next year, certainly in Women's World Tour. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the FTJ Nouvelle Acatine for Touriscope team previews for 2022. And if you want to give us a review on podcast players, that helps out the pod a lot. Or if you're watching on YouTube, like it down below, and we'll see you with the next one. Ciao.